Plant Growth and Development Chapter 15 Plant Growth and Development Chapter 15 15.1 Growth 15.2 Differentiation D differentiation and redifferentiation 15.3 development 15.4 plant growth regulators 15.5 photoperiodism 15.6 vernal is out I on you have already studied the organization of a flowering plant in chapter 5. Have you ever thought about where and how the structures like roots, stems, leaves, flowers, fruits and seeds arise and out to in an orderly sequence? You are, by now, aware of the term seed, seedling plantlet, mature plant. You have also seen that trees continue to increase in height or dirt over a period of time. However, the leaves, flowers and fruits of the same tree not only have limited dimensions but also appear and fall periodically and sometime repeatedly. Why does vegetative phase precede flowering in a plant? All plant organs are made up of a variety of tissues, is there any relationship between the structure of a cell, a tissue, an organ and the function they perform? Can the structure and the function of these be altered? All cells of a plant are descendants of the zygote. The question is, then, why and how do they have different structural and functional attributes? Development is the sum of two processes, growth and differentiation. To begin with, it is essential and sufficient to know that the development of a mature plant from a zygote, fertilized egg, follow a precise and highly ordered succession of events. During this process a complex body organization is formed that produces roots, leaves, branches, flowers, fruits, and seeds, and eventually they die, figure 15.1. In this chapter, you shall also study some of the factors which govern and control these developmental processes. These factors are both intrinsic, internal, and extrinsic, external, to the plant. Two hundred forty biology seed code epicotyl book cotyl dons cotyl and soil line epicotyl hypocotyl hypocotyl figure fifteen point one germination and seedling development in mean two hundred forty biology seed code epicotyl book cotyl dons cotyl and soil line epicotyl hypocotyl hypocotyl figure fifteen point one germination and seedling development in mean fifteen point one growth growth is regarded as one of the most fundamental and conspicuous characteristics of a living being. What is growth? Growth can be defined as an irreversible permanent increase in size of an organ or its parts or even of an individual cell. Generally, growth is accompanied by metabolic processes, both anabolic and catabolic, that occur at the expense of energy. Therefore, for example, expansion of a leaf is growth. How would you describe the swelling of a piece of wood when placed in water? January 1st 15 plant growth generally is indeterminate plant growth is unique because plants retain the capacity for unlimited growth throughout their life. This ability of the plants is due to the presence of meristems at certain locations in their body. The cells of such meristems have the capacity to divide and self-perpetuate. The product, however, soon loses the capacity to divide and such cells make up the plant body. This form of growth wherein new cells are always being added to the plant body by the activity of the meristem is called the open form of growth. What would happen if the meristem ceases to divide? Does this ever happen? In Chapter 6, you have studied about the root apical meristem and the shoot apical meristem. You know that they are responsible for the 